Hey everyone, it is Dave and Josh back for another episode of A Good Chatter. The NFL season is starting and it's a really exciting time for us to start talking NFL football with everything that's going on right now with the NBA, Major League Baseball, of course the NHL, but the NFL is what makes the world go round. Again, you're following us on JP25 Media. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the subscribe button. At the same time, you can follow us at JP25.media. Okay, so the first story of the day <laughs> is something I've been really wanting to talk about. That's why I let you bring it up first. Okay, you guys have probably all seen it by now, but Odell Beckham Jr. allegedly likes to get shit on. Slim Danger was on Selena Powell's podcast, No Jumper, and here's the clip. Did you, like, squat on him? Like I was just, like, like sitting on him for a second, and he was like, okay, baby, sh like, shit on me. And I was like, mm. Like, on his chest, right? Yeah, I, I couldn't do I tried. I tried. I couldn't. Okay, so if a girl, if the other way around, and a girl wanted to shit on you, <laughs> what would you say? Because Odell flew her out just to get shit on. Yeah, that's a deal breaker. Yeah. If a girl shit on me, it would be a deal breaker. I don't care who she is. That's that that's on the list of no. It's crazy. We aren't doing that. Dude, I don't understand. I mean, look, I know people have their own things and their fetishes and stuff. Yeah. People that want to get pissed on. I don't get that one either. Dude, even... Here you go. Even... <laughs> I'm going to look over at my own kid and say this. Even chicks that squirt, I'm thinking, how many sheets do you fucking go through? You know? And how often do you have to buy a new mattress? It yeah. gets pretty expensive if you're with a chick that starts squirting all over the place. I was with one one time. Was, <laughs> in Alabama, it was a nightmare. It was, it was all over the walls. It was like a... She was like a faucet. It was, it was a, like a Jackson uh, Pollock it, painting? Yeah, it was a human sprinkler. It was fucking out of control. But going back to Odell Beckham Jr., Dude, he, what's he known for now? The catch or for getting shit on? Because it's clear, yeah. she's, she's very detailed as you can see in the clip. He does like this. Like, this is documented. Here's the deal, okay? So, he's in with the Cleveland Browns. I mean, there's a goddamn joke right there, just Browns. Then you go, okay, well, who's his best friend? It's it's Jarvis Landry. Yeah. Teammates, right, since college, LSU. They're in the NFL together. If you're Jarvis Landry, how do you not walk into the locker room and say first thing, I told y'all he's the true number two. <laughs> I'm the number one receiver, right? There's always a competition. Yeah, I mean, Jarvis Landry has the, the line of the day right there. Yeah. Damn. It's crazy. Okay. <laughs> Going into fetishes, have you known anybody that knew that did anything crazy like that? Have you ever, ever I don't know friends that would uh, admit to it. Um, I mean, everybody has a friend that was with somebody that was kind of crazy. Yeah. I had a buddy of mine once was with a girl who had one leg, but he didn't know she even had one leg till like the next day. After he banged her? Yeah. And he, uh, he, was so, he was so messed up. He said, uh, he just thought she was flexible as shit because it was easy. <laughs> but he said he went to the bathroom and took a piss and he turned around and there's a fake leg leaning against the wall. <laughs> He's like, Jesus, whose Jesus leg is that? Christ. And he went back in the bedroom and realized she had one leg. And that was a... Was he was, drunk? Or you, oh, yeah, I, completely drunk. Because she can't do... Yeah, you he know? wasn't even thinking that there's a leg in the way. Okay. I don't know if you guys know, he has a fetish. He actually does like to get shit on. <laughs> but it's not what you think it is. It's on Twitter. I, I, every every morning I wake up to him saying, hey, 7 in the morning, three people told me to go fuck myself. Yeah. And I said, wow, that's great for you. That's You're weird. So uh, let's move over it's to true. that. Yes. I do. I, I, if people tell me either yeah. eat shit or go fuck yourself. And he loves it. He's uh, the weirdest fucking guy I just guy like the, the fact I get a reaction. Nice. What's the okay. deal with your shirt? <laughs> I didn't know if you would notice. It's my Crystal Gale shirt. I uh, got mauled by a cougar. I got mauled by a cougar. I love the movie Talladega Nights. And so uh, when I saw I had an opportunity to buy the Crystal Gill shirt that Will Ferrell wears in the movie, where she asked him, you know, the story about how his day was, I said, man, I'm buying that shirt and see if anybody would notice. But I sat down going, I'm going to make it through this whole show before you realize, are you wearing a fucking Crystal Gill shirt? <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing a goddamn Crystal Gill shirt. Believe it or not, as a kid, she was my neighbor. When I lived in Nashville, Tennessee, so it's kind of funny that it, she has her own shirt right now. But uh, yeah, sorry, did I embarrass you? No, it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking funny. Okay, so let's move over to the NFL. All right, so let's get into some NFL talk. That was the weird stuff. Hopefully, the weirdest thing to happen this year in the NFL. But some of the things going on, big stories. Nothing bigger than, of course, Tom Brady going to the Buccaneers. It's so weird that a dynasty with the Patriots comes to an end with the separation of Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. So here we go. You have some big name quarterbacks that have changed teams. I'm going to ask you which quarterback will have the biggest impact on their new team. Okay, your choices are Cam Newton now with the Patriots, Tom Brady with the Buccaneers, 
Phillip Rivers with the Colts or Teddy Bridgewater with the Panthers? I think all of them are, have a huge impact, but I think Tom Brady. He brought a whole new vibe to Tampa Bay. That's a bad organization. They got all these new guys, O.J. Howard, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, all look like they're ready to play now. Um, it's just a different vibe in Tampa. I think they're going to make the playoffs for the first time in a long time. It will be something else to sit there and watch what's going to happen. It starts off with game one for them. You have Tom Brady and Drew Brees. I mean, two Hall of Famers. How exciting is that? It's um, it, it's outstanding. I mean, the NFL couldn't be in a better position right now with two guys like that in the same division going to face each other two times. It used to be one of those they barely saw each other. Now you have two of the best of all time are going to face each other two times this year. Could meet again in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. I think they have a great chance of, of making it. For me, though, I think the guy that's going to have the biggest impact on his team, and maybe it's because I followed him for so long, is Phillip Rivers. Okay. I think Phillip Rivers is going to be a difference maker for the Colts this year, and the Colts are going to have a, a pretty good year. I know offensive line, they're strong and don't have a lot of receiving help. But I, I like what the Colts have, and, and I think if Philip Rivers has anything left in the tank, I think the Colts are going to be okay. You don't think he's going to throw picks at the end of the game? Of course. Because <laughs> he, he did that shit here. Why, why won't he do it in on. Indianapolis? What, what? If, what if he doesn't? How pissed will you be now? I'll if, be really fucked yeah, up. Yeah, I'm, like, like, I'm a root for him, but I'm kind of hoping he fucks up at the you're end. You're like, you better know. fuck yeah. up with the minute to go. Yeah, That's what asshole. we're used to. You, you didn't do it for us here. What if he turns into, like, John Elway? In Indianapolis, where he's just like the most clutch guy of all time. That would be the most San Diego thing ever, right? <laughs> where our guy leaves and he does great, like Anthony Rizzo. It's like, fuck, dude. I've seen this fucking story before. <laughs> what would be a bigger story right now in the NFL? The Buccaneers not making the playoffs or the Patriots making the playoffs? The Buccaneers not making the playoffs. When you have the greatest player of all time going to a new team with all this hype and he doesn't even make the playoffs when he always makes the playoffs, I think that's a huge story. Um, what do you think? I think that's the biggest story as well. The Buccaneers are loaded. they got a, a very good coach. He is an offensive co- head coach for the first time, meaning in Tom Brady. And for Cam Newton, number one, I'm just not a huge Cam Newton fan. Um, I think Cam Newton was always involved in things that football wasn't first. I understand since being in New England, they can't say enough nice things about him. He's already a team captain, which they say New England is very rare in your first year. But as good as Cam Newton was, even his MVP year, there is no talent around him in New England. I mean, there is nothing there for him to be good. And the Patriots have eight guys who have decided to sit out this season. I mean, they're only 22 when you consider the offense and defense. Eight of those 22 aren't playing this year. That's that's very tough. So yeah. um, for me, I think it's going to be a tough year for, for Cam Newton. If the Patriots do well, fine. But I think they're kind of in a no-lose situation, meaning that no one expects them to do anything. If they don't do anything, maybe they have a chance of getting a Trevor Lawrence. Exactly. And if they do something, then Bill Belichick can prove, guess what, it was me. It wasn't Tom Brady the entire time. Yeah, I mean, I hope they lose. They have two Auburn quarterbacks on their roster. They're a Boston team. They have everything going wrong for them. If they get a Clemson quarterback next year, I'm for sure. Against, uh, <laughs> I, I hate the Patriots. Okay, who are your picks to make the playoffs this season? Um, my, my, my picks to make the playoffs this season. All right, we're going to go with the AFC. I have the Buffalo Bills, who for the first time I think will win the East. In the North, I have two teams coming out. I have the Ravens and the Steelers mm-hmm. coming out. In the South, I have two teams as well. I have the Titans and the Colts. The Titans are one of those teams that seem like people don't want to give any credit to. I think no people really have a tough time still believing in Tannehill. But if you remember, they were in the AFC Championship game just a year ago and were leading the Chiefs. Um, and in the West, I have two teams. I have uh, the Chiefs and I have the Raiders. And I never know what I'm going to get from the Raiders. But the reason I, I put them in there, I think the Raiders gain some wins against the Chargers and the Broncos this year. The Chargers are going to have a tough time with that Derwin James. Kills their defense. And um, I think the NFC South, I mean, excuse me, the AFC South, the reason you're going to get two teams out of there, the Texans and Jags, aren't very good. So you have a chance of gaining wins there as well. But um, in the East, I think the Bills are the only team that have a chance of, of making the postseason. Okay. For me, for my AFC picks, take the paper over. I got a little bit different. I got the Bills with the worst division in the NFL, the AFC East. Then I have the Ravens, Steelers, and Browns. I got three teams. I think the Browns turn it around this year, even though their receiver likes to get shit on. And the Titans coming out of the South as the only team that's a really bad division as well. I think Phil Rivers throws picks and fucks it up like he did here in San Diego. And then in the West, I have the Chargers and the Chiefs coming out of the AFC West. That'd be something else. Yeah. If the Chargers made it again without Phillip Rivers, that'd be, that'd be a hell of a story right there. Okay. Going on to the NFC, in the East, I have uh, the Eagles and I have the Dallas Cowboys. I think, again, it's easy to gain wins when you're facing the Giants twice and the Redskins twice. In the North, I only have one team. I have the Minnesota Vikings. In the South, I have the Saints and the Buccaneers. And in the West, I have two teams. I have the 49ers. I have the Rams with the Seahawks being out. Okay. I almost agree wholeheartedly on that. I hate the Eagles. I think their receiving corps is really bad. I have only the Cowboys coming out of the NFC East. 
I have the Vikings and Packers coming out of the North. I have the Buccaneers and Saints as well coming out of the NFC South. And the Seahawks and 49ers coming out of the NFC West. At the end of the regular season, who do you think will be the MVP? The MVP, I think, at the end of the regular season, I'm going with Christian McCaffrey. Okay. Going running back for Carolina. Even though his team's not very good? Even though his team's not very good, I think it's a great opportunity for him to earn a ton of fantasy points. Okay. I'm going with Patrick Mahomes. I think he's going to get his second MVP. The best quarterback I've ever seen in my lifetime. Um, I think he's the best player. Yeah, I don't think he can go wrong, especially quarterbacks seem to, to win most of the MVP awards. Who's your pick for the Super Bowl? Who comes out of the AFC? Who comes out of the NFC? Dude, I think the Chiefs go back-to-back. I just think their roster is so stacked. That offense is... Is you can't stop them at all. I think the Chiefs will go against the Saints. Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. Chiefs against the Saints. I have the Saints coming out of the NFC, but I have the Ravens coming out of the AFC this year. We'll see. Lamar Jackson's never won a playoff game. Never. Let's see if this is the year. He said he's heard all the criticism and he's going to try and prove everybody wrong. But um, I think you're going to get Drew Brees and you're going to go with uh, Lamar Jackson. And I'm going to go Drew Brees in his last NFL season wins his second Super Bowl. Wow, that'd be amazing. I okay. think it would be a great storyline, right? Yeah. A okay. great storyline. Who are your picks for this week? All right, so every week we're going to give you picks, all right? So we go through and, and we make our picks for you to have a chance, maybe earn a little bit of money, not telling you to go ahead and place your money on our picks, especially beginning of the NFL season. It's always tough, especially we didn't see any preseason. We don't know what these guys are going to look like. Could mm-hmm. be a lot of sloppy football. Traditionally, in the years that I have uh, placed bets is um, – the very beginning of the year, teams cover. Mm-hmm. Then in the middle of the year, most of the time, it's the underdog that covers, that, that wins for you. And then the last four games, it's usually the favorite. So if, if you were to pick the underdog, though, every single bet, and you would go through the entire season, they said the underdog wins almost 60% of the time. Really? Yeah. So people always like to think, well, the Chiefs can beat the Texans by more than nine. That's how they look at the spread. Like, how many can they beat them by instead of can a team cover. People are yeah. afraid to do the cover thing. But if you go with can they cover, it actually wins more the other way. So I have three uh, I have three picks for you that I feel comfortable with. Uh, for me, my three picks this week. The Chargers are favored by three and a half on the road at Cincinnati. It's Joe Burrow's first game. He's never seen an NFL defense. Outside of Derwin James, that Charger defense is pretty strong. I think the Chargers covered that three and a half against Joe Burrow. I think it's a wake-up call for any rookie quarterback. Uh, the Raiders are going to pick them against Carolina. The Raiders are on the road. Again, I'm going to go uh, with the Raiders. I expect uh, with a new head coach in Carolina that uh, the Carr and the Raiders are going to win that game. So I'm going with them when they pick them. And the Sunday night game is exciting. For for me as a kid, I remember one of my first games watching and trying to figure out what was going on was the Rams and the Dallas Cowboys. And just the way it looks on TV with the uniforms, I always thought it was cool. The Rams with their helmets and the royal blue and the mix of the famous uh, cowboy uniforms. I always think the two best games to look on television and go, man, football doesn't get better than this. The Steelers uniforms against the cowboy uniforms and the Rams uniforms against the cowboy uniforms. It's going to look great on TV at the new SoFi Stadium. But the Cowboys, believe it or not, are favored in this game by two. I think the Cowboys secondary is absolutely terrible. I'm going to go with the Rams. This is one where the Rams are plus two. They are my lock of the week for the Rams this week. I hope they do. I really hate the Cowboys as well. So <laughs> I'm ready for the Rams. I think the stadium is going to be awesome. Are you more excited to see Cowboys, Rams, or Buccaneers, Saints? It's a great question. For me, it's going to be the Rams and Cowboys. If I had to watch one game this weekend, that would it be it because it's SoFi Stadium. And, and normally, I, I cover the NFL. I've been doing it 27 years. And I asked ESPN this year, can I switch over to the Rams, leave the Chargers, and, and follow that team? And uh, that was all set to go, but ESPN has uh, basically decided with COVID that there will be no reporters at the game. So I'll be here watching every NFL game with you. And uh, it's always fun to sit there and watch football with you. But at the same time, I would have loved to have been inside SoFi Stadium for the first game. I don't think it's any coincidence at all that the Cowboys get that first game. Jerry Jones had a lot to do with the Rams coming back to Los Angeles, and I'm sure it was part of the agreement. Hey, I went the first game inside that stadium. So, uh, pretty good deal. Absolutely. Are you ready for a Jake story? Yeah, you want me to tell the Jake story today? I, I, you, I you. His story is so good. <laughs> I, I, third time in a row. All right, I told this story earlier on uh, the Dave and Jeff show this week. So, I'm going to tell the same one because um, we got a bunch of them. But this is a story that, that made me think of Jake because this week I just got back from Phoenix, Arizona. And I've coached Josh and Jake at a bunch of tournaments in Phoenix over the years and it's always a memory of something usually something good it's always a good childhood memories and plenty of times we've coached baseball you're exhausted after being in the heat and you're driving back the five hours for us back to san diego and in arizona they used to have um, these cameras on the side of the freeway that would flash your license plate and the speed you were going 
So there was a stretch where it said 75 miles an hour, and then boom, it dropped down to 55, and then back to 75. So it was like a mile to a two mile stretch of 55, and you're going, what the hell, I just saw a flash. I'm going, did I just get a ticket? Yeah. And then in my mind, I'm thinking, ah, screw it. I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna get a ticket because I'm going back to San Diego. They aren't gonna get me. Well, my buddy Brian got the same situation the day before. Cameras flashed. All of a sudden, somebody knocked on his door here in San Diego, and someone hand delivered the ticket to him. Yeah. And the ticket was for four hundred dollars. And he told me the story, and I said, "Damn, the cameras went off for me too." So I told you and your brother at the time, and at the time you were like thirteen. Jake's like eight years old. I said, if somebody comes to the door and asks for me, tell them I'm not here. I don't want that ticket. Sure enough, next day, knock at the door. I don't even think about you know someone knocking at the door if I just told you. Jake answers the door. I, I'm in the kitchen. I can hear him answer the door, and I hear a guy say, is David Pallet there? Of course, pronounce my name wrong. And Jake goes, my dad's not here. And he goes, well, I have something for him. And he says, well, my dad died last month driving back from Arizona in a car accident. He's not here. And the guy just looked at Jake, turned around and walked away. <laughs> Sorry for your loss. Walked away. And Jake saved me $400. Quick thinking. Boom. And he, and he saved me 400 bucks right there by telling the guy my dad died in a horrible car accident coming back from Arizona. Brian had to pay 400 bucks. I got off scot-free. They never once hit me back up for that money. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was quicker on their feet than Jake. That's, yeah, that's a fact. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It was uh, it was awesome. So, uh, again, uh, I appreciate the opportunity of always telling these Jake stories. And, and as you guys know, the JP and the JP25 is, is for Jake and his memory. Um, again, you can follow us on Twitter at Josh Palais. You can follow me at Dave Palais. And, again, at jp25.media. And if you're watching on YouTube, please push the subscribe button. Also, look at the other shows that we have out as well. Josh does a great job with some very, very entertaining shows. They make me cringe, but people tell me all the time, these are the best shows going. So if you get a chance, check out some of the other shows that we're putting out on JP25 Media. Absolutely. Thank you, guys.